Good afternoon and welcome once again to Hudson Fields Hazen Union High School in Hart, Vermont. Your Hazen Union Wildcats in action today against the Fairfax Bullets. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Griff on camera, our second straight night up here. Looking like the showers are going to hold off and we're going to have a good time today. Both teams. In search of their first victory, the Bullets come in with a record of 0-1. They lost 8-0 to Milton. I was talking to their coach, Jake Hubbard, before the game. Milton, a D2 school, pretty deep, pretty strong. They went far in the playoffs last year. So, uh, you know, a tough way to start a season, but uh, nonetheless, something, like we say, it's something to aspire to when you play against a team like that. Our Hazen Union Wildcats come in with a record of 0-1 as well. They lost to the People's Academy Wolves 5-1 last week to open up their season. One thing we're noticing, a little more depth on the bullet side of the bench as opposed to the Wildcat bench, and that's what sort of hurt them against PA as well. We only had like one sub. So uh, let's see what happens. The mini shopper, Ethan Shopland. back in goal once again. I think this is Ethan's uh, second or third. Uh, second full season. I think he played some as a freshman. He definitely played all last year as a sophomore. The junior this year. Cody Davis is still on the bench. I'm hearing he is not cleared, but uh, I don't know. You know, I probably shouldn't even have said that. I don't know why Cody's not playing. Up front, the high-scoring tandem of Cody Hall and Isaiah Baker. The butcher, the baker, the goal maker. Talking to first-year coach Kyle Bursing before the game. He's hoping we just put the ball in the net this game. A little more game experience. The team, both teams, Griff, both our, our Wildcat boys and Lady Cat girls, I think are searching for an identity, searching for some cohesiveness, and uh, that's what we're hoping to get a little more of today. Tyson Davison tried to get a foot on that. Doesn't go. Bullets control. Bring it up on the far side. So far, a rather sparse Wildcat home crowd. Bullet fans have traveled well down from Fairfax. They have a decent-sized contingent here. Not seeing a whole lot on our side of the field. But it's early. Once again, another absolutely spectacular day to be up here. A little bit of a breeze, but we can deal with that, right, Griff? It's a lot better than the forecast had indicated. Yeah, originally it was going to be talking showers and thunder showers and heavy rain and all kinds of lightning and stuff. And if that were the case, Griff and I would not be standing here. <laughs> no. Action contained mostly to the middle field so far. Have a white throw in. I'm trying to match up some names and numbers here, but I can't quite make out numbers when they're way over on the other side of the field like that. Here's Tyson looking to move up. Drops it back. Big boot up by Lincoln Mitchell. A freshman on the team this year. Here's Wyatt Bellavance moving the ball up front. You know what I think Wyatt and Ethan split a little time in goal a few years ago. So I'm thinking this is Ethan's second full season. I do remember Wyatt playing. Lining up for the free kick, Adam Degree on the direct kick. Will he take it or will it be number 19, who I do not have a name and number for? Oh, there's a head in off the post and a goal. Wow, what a shot over there. We had the direct kick and then the header and then a post and then a goal for the Fairfax Bullets. Griff, did you see who headed that in? 
Um, as soon as this player turns around, I'm going to get a number for, I think, 11. Okay. Did we have a number 11 or we can't tell just yet? I think it's, yeah, it, is number, it was number 11. We'll give it to number 11. That's Carol Brusso, and I do have a pen with me today, Griff. <laughs> so keep track of this stuff. Yes. Carol Brusso with the first goal for the Bullets to give them the early 1-0 lead with 37-15 left to go in the first half. We're just barely, uh, not even three minutes in. Saw the same thing happen to our Lady Cats yesterday. Bullets threaten again. Booted out. Cats, once again, dug themselves a hole to dig out of. Center pass. Wow, look at this ball movement. Griff, these guys are something else, aren't they? So far, they look pretty good. <laughs> really beautiful uh, set player. Yeah, the way they can uh, kind of get that soft kick up there, and the player gets the head on it. Pretty amazing. I don't think that ball was set. Referee wants him to do it over. James Boyd says, huh, really? Boyd, gonna re-kick. Directly up in, taken out by Wyatt Bellavance. Over on the far side, I believe that's Finn Rooney. Rosenthal boots that one down to Jeanette Brochu's house. That ball boy's going to be gone for a while. There's a long shot from outside. The mini shopper. Sweeps that one up. Long punt. Just enough of a breeze today, at least up here on the roof. I don't know how it is down there on the field, but you got to wonder if the wind might come into play a little bit on some of these kicks. Nice breeze up here on the roof. Wyatt Bellavance up, knocked out by Boyd. This is not good. Mini Shopper way out of the box, trying to make a play. Gets tangled up with Brusso, who's already got one goal. Or no, that's number 10, excuse me, Owen DeMar. There's Cody Hall, keeps it in, he's got a step. Going to get the shot, going to try and cross over. Baker's there, can't quite connect. Baker goes down with goalkeeper Robert Dearborn. No call, and letting them play. Over there on the far side, that's Riker Willett. Brings the ball back up. Willett on his horse, trying to get it. Makes a play, here's Bellavance. Up ahead, it's past the defenders. Goalkeeper comes out, they're gonna give it, oh, ball goes by, Baker gonna catch up with him. Dearborn on his horse. Woo, Some, these goalkeepers aren't afraid to come out, either one of them, try and make a play. Here's Cody Hall on the throw in, long throw. Baker, up over, oh, wow, Dearborn almost into the post. I don't know how that ball didn't go in. Beautiful attempt by Baker. Scary moment there as Dearborn went up to try and make the save, sort of collided halfway with the post. Post pretty unforgiving. Corner kick in, middle of the field, bunch of Cats there, but booted out by the Bullets' defense. 
Some wild and wooly action so far, Griff. Willette, center of the field. It was Isaac Decker using his head to advance the ball up. Rosenthal picks the pocket of that offensive player whose number I can't see. Willette going to make the throw in for the Cats. 33-17 left. Oh, and I meant to do this at the top of the uh, show as well. Our sponsor today, once again, Calderwood Insurance Agency. 472-5517, the number to call. Service and protection since 1979. Give Mike Gothier a call. He will insure everything and anything that you need insurance on. As Robert Dearborn ensures that that goal doesn't go in. Well, a couple of Cats right there. Long punt. Wow. Rosenthal. Willette. High shot up. Coming down with a nice trap by Potvin. Or is that number 19? That's a number 19 that I don't have a uh, name for. Try and get these Bullets players names a little bit better as soon as we can get some clear shots at the numbers. Finn Rooney on the throw. Bellavance going to get called on that one as he uh, laid a little more of a shoulder into Boyd. Boyd, long kick up. Bellavance out. Ball boy keeps it from going over the bank. And... Did we get another illegal throw in? I think so. Wow. Maybe they're calling it a little tighter this year. It's the second one we've seen. They probably watched all our games last year. And exactly. Change. And heard us complain about it. Yep. I mean, basically, they were doing, you know, chess passes in. Shot up ahead. He's the defense. Give chase. Here's the offensive player for the Bullets over on the far side. Crosses over. Ball's up high. And over. Looked like it went in the net. Bullets crowd got excited for a moment and then realized it was on the back of the net, not in the net. Julius Rosenthal. Spinning kick to midfield. Booted up by Ethan Wimet. Here's Wimet again. Was trying to feed it to uh, Owen Demar. Play broken up. Tyson, back to, to uh, Wamet. Wamet inside, taken out by Rosenthal. Finn Rooney, up ahead to Baker. The butcher, the Baker, can't get by. Baker over on the far side working against Levi Trask. Wyatt Bellavance with a little chip. There's a shot from outside, gonna go high. Now if I'm remembering right last year, Griff, this just came back to me now as I was watching Wyatt kick that last ball. Remember, we had the difference between a chip and a chunk. That's Remember right. Remember that? We invented We chunk. invented the chunk. <laughs> we'll look for a chunk. We'll try and 
Let you know the difference between the chip and the chunk. Oh, yeah. Levi Trask, nice job of clearing that ball out for the Bullets. Baker trying to make the turn, couldn't quite get it there. Here we go again, Bullets make the push. There's a shot over, easy save for the shopper. The mini shopper. Davison. Looking to make something happen here. Drops it over, Bellavance up ahead. Defense right there, here's Bellavance again. Goes by, that was Boyd. Boyd's been pretty rock solid back there for the Bullets defense, doesn't let a lot go by him. And we're gonna have offsides. Owen Tamara was offside. We could see it from up here, Griff. By about a step, it was close, yep. he was close. Yep. And if you can get away with it, by all means, go for it. But if you can't, you're going to get that call every time. Rosenthal up ahead. That ball kicked out by Wamet. Here's Cody Hall on the throw in. Gets it across. Baker there. Ball goes over. Finn Rooney trying to make a play to Baker. Baker and Decker go shoulder to shoulder over there. Reese Decker, the sophomore. We have a bullet's throw, I think. 27, 15 and counting left to go here in the first half. Bullets jumped out to that early 1-0 lead off a of Carl Brusso, off a direct kick that went uh, up in the air and then uh, I think it was Brusso got the head on it and then the, hit the post and Tell you, he's a pinball wizard. There has to be a trick. <laughs> that's what that goal looked like. Adam Degree on the throw. And Tamara gets called for being offside again. Referee right on the other side of the field. Got the perfect vantage point. Easy call. Rosenthal with the big boot up. Tyson Davison gives chase in the corner against Degree. Cody Hall, long throw, middle of the field. Bellavance gets the head on it, up and over. Wyatt Bellavance. Goal, kick, Fairfax, Bullets. Spinning kick up, Baker traps that one down. Levi Trash trying to make a play over there, him and Baker tangled up. Colton Nimi over to Davison. Davison can't get it there though. Adam Degree in, there's a ball up. Picked off by Dearborn. Dearborn, the senior for the Bullets. Wings it out to number 19. Number 19, moving up the field. We'll call him Johnny U. That was Johnny Unitas' number. <laughs> 19. Nice play up the line, but it doesn't stay in by Colton Gillian. Play up for Degree. Tamara not called for offside this time. Or did they once again? I believe that was a foul. A foul, okay. It's a straight up foul. All right. I was going to say, I thought I saw a Wildcat player in front of him. It's getting a little redundant. Rosenthal, back up to the middle of the field. BFA with control. Boyd up ahead. Over there on the far side, Caleb Friend gives chase. 
Well, that was uh, Brusso tangling with Caleb. I believe we're going to have a hold up here. Substitution. Off goes Finn Rooney. I believe that's Riker Willett. Bellavance back to Willett. Willett, big foot high. Turn to Meyer. Up ahead. Brusso on the far side. Brings it into the middle. Tamara was right there, but they couldn't get it to him. Friend knocked that one out. Back up in. Here we go. Ball down. Nice play there by the defense and by the, little, the mini shopper, Ethan Shoplin. I thought, I thought the Bullets were going to get a goal out of that one. But the Hazen defense thwarted the attempt. <laughs> That's right. But so far, I must say this Bullets defense has stymied the Hazen offensive attack as we have a small shower rolling through right now. Griff scrambling to keep the equipment covered. We're going to try and keep this going as long as we can. I, think, I don't think it's going to last long. There's sun coming behind it. Long kick up. Hazen. Willette whistles across. He was on his horse over there to catch up with that one. Caleb Friend trying to make a play back. Willette, middle of the field. Davison inside. Balls down. Dearborn comes up with it. Hazen just a step or two behind so far. Dearborn, punt, midfield. Played the wrong way by Anthony Patrick, but Rosenthal there to boot it back up. Bullets. Here's Johnny Yu for the Bullets. We call him that because he wears number 19. I don't have a name on the program for him, so I'm calling him Johnny Hughes. Johnny, oh, Demar, shot on goal. The mini shopper down. Mini shopper punt, middle of the field. Boyd. All world defense so far here in the first half for the Fairfax Bullets. Going to have Anthony Patrick on the throw in. Patrick with the throw in. Colton Nimi. Boyd with some uh, pretty liberal hands right there. Going to shove Colton right out of the way. Demar looking to turn against Patrick. Demar in, shot on, Shopper down. Ethan Shopland getting tested this game. And now the wind really blowing up here. And I, down there on the field, you got to wonder. A little bit of a front coming through right now, but I don't think it's going to last. Johnny Yu. Throw in. Looks over. Lincoln Mitchell. That's a 15. That was Michael Medore making that play with Mitchell getting tangled up with him for a little bit. Throw in. He was looking for Colton Gillian. Ball went off the end line. Hazen. Well, actually, they're going to give. Uh, 
They're gonna give the bullets a kick. On this, was there some sort of, must have been some sort of foul on that play, Griff? Looks like it, must have been a foul, yep. Shot up and over. Now we'll have the Hazen goal kick. Kicking into the wind, you can see that ball getting held up. We're gonna have a handball. Did he? No, I thought I heard a whistle. I thought he had it with his hand, but I guess not. Finn Rooney. Gets his pocket picked by Owen Demar. This Owen Demar has been up here all over the offensive end for the Bullets. Rosenthal with the Hazen goal kick. Johnny Yu back up to Mar, directs it in. Taken out by Rosenthal, a mile high in the air. Throw in Demar. Decker working against Bellavance. Chips it in, looking for uh, Gillian. Here we're back to degree. These guys misdirect these kicks, you know, like almost like a hockey player does with a stick, you know? Yep. Shot in, man, almost. Decker got the head on it, couldn't get it into the goal though. Just the way they play it, you know, it looks like he's gonna go, then they kind of misdirect. Rosenthal, middle of the field, taken down by Weston Black, I believe. <laughs> Levi Trask was working against Cody Hall on the far side. White throw. 16.54 left to go in the first half. Fairfax Bullets up 1-0 on a goal by Carl Brusso. Hazen Wildcat boys action today. Second game of the season, their home opener against the Fairfax Bullets. Lance Hall with the call. HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived. www.hctv.us. Our sponsor today, Calderwood Insurance. Number to call 472 5517. Service and protection since 1979. Give Mike Gothier a call. He will insure everything and anything you need insurance on. Here we have the corner pick by the Bullets. Griff on camera, and a save once again by Ethan Shopland. Ethan's going to be tired by the end of this game if this keeps up. Middle of the field, that's Caleb Friend. Here we have Decker. Pass over on the far side to Black. Black up ahead. Seems like the Bullets have almost had their way with getting the ball over to the far side of the field and then crossing to the center. And I think we've really avoided... Off the, that went in, no, off the side. Man, we, we have really avoided a number of, of goals being scored on us. That was Johnny Yu with the hard shot that went off the side of the net. Corner kick. Trapped down, moved up ahead. High kick. Looking for the middle. Gillian up over the net. Rosenthal kick. A friend. Caleb Friend goes down. Boyd. You know, James Boyd is good, but I've seen him kind of use the hands a couple times now, Griff. That is uh, something you're not supposed to do, but yep. sometimes you can get away with it. And he has so far. I'm not saying he's not a great defender, but I've seen him at least twice now. Kind of use the hands. Here's Decker, stayed on side. Puts a shot on. Scooped up by the shopper. And here comes our Hazen Union Lady Cats team up from their practice. And we'll get a little bit more of a crowd here now. Come out to support their boys. Far side, where have we seen this, Griff? Far side, <laughs> then they're going to center it. And there's the shot, but it goes wide. 
I think Coach Kyle Bursing is going to have to make some adjustments at halftime for that play. Yep. Um, seem to be able to get that whenever they want it. Yeah. And the defense has played fairly well. Shoppers really keeping us in this game because I, I think it could easily be 4 or 5 nothing right now with some of the stuff we've seen. Finn Rooney. Looks up ahead. Ball kept in. Play up, that's Reese Decker. Working against Anthony Patrick. Decker goes down. Gonna give bullets to the bullets the kick. on the far side. They had a player up there, kind of sort of a tall, rangy fellow who was looking to head that one in. Field. Tyson Davison up ahead. There's Riker Willett trying to move it up, and it goes out of bounds. Harder Gazette photographer Vanessa Fournier over there on the other sideline, just almost daring them to go after her. Vanessa fears no soccer player. Wyatt Bellavance moving the ball up front, trying to come down with that. Gets by the defense momentarily. So this, of course, means it has to go off a Hazen player. Or did he say direct? I don't know. I think he might have said direct. Did he say direct? I thought I heard it. <laughs> Johnny Yu, middle of the field. Moves it over. Decker. In between the legs of Anthony Patrick. Demire gives chase, but right there to knock that one out is Lincoln Mitchell. As the showers come down once again, we'll hope this is just another passing one. 10.35 left to go in the first half. Bullets up one zip on an early goal by Carl Brusso. We're going to have a corner kick. Reese Decker will take it. I'd say that, Griff, these are intermittent showers. Yep. I'd agree. Nuisance. <laughs> Nuisance. More annoying than anything, yeah. yes. Middle of the field. <laughs> Rosenthal. Middle of the field. Finn Rooney looking to bring that one down. Mitchell. Far up ahead. Here's Caleb Friend. Boot up ahead. And taking out smartly by James Boyd. To the side, night off the end. Give the cats a throw in. Colton Nimi will take the throw in as Cody, Dave, uh, Cody Hall subbed out for Isaiah Baker. Nimi 
Cross. Baker can't get a foot on it. Back. Mitchin puts a shot on wide. Quite wide. But it's nice to see our Wildcats at least getting some shots. We haven't seen a whole lot of that. Dearborn takes the goal kick for the Bullets. 8.40 left to go in the first half. Bullets up one zip. Wyatt Bellavance moves it up. Baker wanted to drop it back to Nimi. Here's Nimi with control near side. Finn Rooney has that one go off the side of his foot. Friend gives chase over there. And we're going to have a goal kick. Patrick comes on strong. There's the ball high. Demar traps that one down. Working against Mitchin. Mitchin and Demar trading paint. And Demar just takes a nice shot. We've seen him get a bunch of chances. Played that one beautifully. Just nailed the outside corner. Does Owen Demar to give the Bullets a 2-0 lead. And that was just a, a beautiful shot that went to the high outside just over the reach of the mini shopper would come out to try and make a play. So, thus far, Coach Kyle Bursing's plan of, of uh, scoring some goals has not come to fruitation yet. Correct. Fruitation. Fruitation. Okay. Wyatt Bellavance up ahead. Ball skids up into the crowd. Nice grab by Aaron Hill. Played back in, Mitchett plays it up. Here's Friend looking to trap that one down. Finn Rooney. That ball's taken out by Boyd. Finn Rooney, well, every time I say Finn Rooney, all I can think of is the principal from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Art Rooney. Too bad his last name wasn't Froman. <laughs> Abe, remember Abe Froman from that movie? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know it's, a little, it's a little old for me. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess I truly show my age with some of these references. Definitely definitely an 80s guy here, Griff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not too out of the question that I have seen it, but. If you haven't, it, you should watch it. It's fabulous. Uh, there's a shot. Finn Rooney! All right. Finn Rooney picks the pocket. I think what I saw happen was the ball bounced up, and uh, I believe the Bullets thought the referee was going to call a handball. It's kind of, you know, it's hard to tell from up here, but in the end, the uh, you saw him almost stop playing. But in the end, Finn Rooney, Johnny on the spot, play to the whistle. If you don't hear the whistle, keep playing. Got to keep playing. You score a goal. 6-13 left to go in there in the first half. Catch back in and out, 2-1. to one. And a goal by Finn Rooney. Great line from that movie is when the principal calls uh, Ferris's mother and lets him know that he's been absent nine times. <laughs> nine times, she says? Nine times. A very young Charlie Sheen has a cameo in that movie. <laughs> He's in it for about 30 seconds. <laughs> Matthew Broderick, of course, played. Lance, is there anything Spiel. you don't know about this movie? Were you the director? Uh, no, but I've watched it a bunch of times. <laughs> 
You've never seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I think Shot I, on goal. Save the mini shopper. I think I have. I just don't have the encyclopedic yeah. knowledge. <laughs> I'll try not to bust out in a version of Twist and Shout. <laughs> Wyatt Bellavance trying to move that one up. Boyd on the far side plays it back. Boyd brings it up. Trying to get the turn was Isaac Decker. Played out right there by Jarrett Sweet, I believe, if that was the number eight on the back of his jersey. Finn Rooney working against Decker. Anthony Patrick. Throw in. Under. Here's Baker with a chance. Baker looks for the middle. I think that was a friend who had a little too much of a step ahead or else he could have caught up with that. Throw in, Hazen. 3.30 left to go in the first half. Cats get, trying to get back in this one now. They've narrowed that lead just to one goal. Scored quickly after the uh, Owen DeMeyer goal, which was good. Be nice to net one more and start over. Come out the second half. Patrick, Pelavance. Chopper. Rooney playing against Degree. Inside, back out, here's Johnny Yu. Underneath, Demar, taken out by Mitchett. Decker goes down. No call. No whistle. And there's Boyd. And once again, I saw a bit of a forearm shiver to the back of our player. Not much of one. Subtle, but it was there. Shot on. Dearborn out to make the save. Nice job. Good work, Red. Stay right up. Minute 20. Fight it out. Let's go. Nice play up ahead. Tamara right there. Rosenthal down. One minute left to play here in the first half. One minute. Rosenthal kick. Forty-five seconds. Johnny U boot ahead. Textbook play almost for the uh, bullets in the first half here. Willette throw up. Out of bounds, 20 seconds. Cat's gonna have to hurry. Throw in Davison, looking for Friend. 
Oh, once again, we're down to 15 seconds. Cats are advancing. Davison tries to come down with it. Taken out. I'm thinking we are going to end the first half with the Bullets with a 2-1 lead. Goals by Owen Demeyer and Carl Brusso. Cats with a bit, little bit of a comeback when Finn Rooney scored and Griff. I neglected to do something when, when Finn scored. Okay. We're going to pretend that Finn is scoring. The ball just went in the net. Okay. Go! <laughs> Finn Rooney. I was as surprised as, as I think if you looked out there, I thought, honestly, I saw the ball hit his hand as well. Yeah. And I had kind of was, was waiting for a whistle as well, so I was as caught as surprised, I think, as the as the Bullets' uh, defense was on that goal. But yeah. you play to the whistle, and, uh, you know, you end up getting back into the game with a 2-1 to one score. Hopefully the uh, Wildcats can get back into this in the second half and knot this thing up and maybe come out of here with a victory today. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Griff on camera, our sponsor today, Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517, the number to call. Service and protection since 1979. We'll see you at the start of the second half. And welcome back. Second half action about to get underway here at Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School in Hard Vermont. Your Hazen Union Wildcat boys and their home season opener hosting the Fairfax Bullets. Bullets out to a 2-1 lead. They had jumped out to an early one-zip lead just barely three minutes into the game on a goal by Carl Brusso. Owen DeMar added one later on in the half, and but we came back with Finn Rooney scoring a goal. I completely messed that up uh, for us uh, right after the uh, DeMar goal. So both these teams looking for their first victory. And uh, let's see what happens here in the second half. First off, I do got to say our sponsor today is Calderwood Insurance. Uh, 472-5517, the number to call. Uh, service and protection since 1979. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16. On your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Griff on camera. And up, standing by my side now, is the one and only Harry Bissett. The rookie uh, Hazen Union Lady Cats varsity coach coming up here to see what the uh, his other uh, first year coach Kyle Bursing is uh, going to do here in the second half. What do you say, Harry? Hello, good to be up here. Good to have you up here, Harry. Now, I, I just I just got here, but I've got a question. Scoreboard says two zero. Is that a miscue on the person operating the scoreboard? Boy, I do not know. I wonder if they took Finn's goal away. No, nope. mm. looks like the ref's calling time. I think he uh, might have noticed the same thing as me. Okay. I hope. Let's see what happened. Or they messed something up. We'll find out. Either way, it's a did irregular you, start to the second half. It is. It is. Let's see what happens here. Now, did you see Finn's goal, Harry? There we go. Okay, two okay. one. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say they can't take the goal away after it's been up there, nope. can they? Uh, that they have to decide immediately. Okay. Okay. They, uh, they don't have the. Gosh, I'm glad uh, you're here. They don't have the help of the video assistant re assistant referee like they're starting to implement at the senior levels mm. or at the professional levels. But uh, referee Frank was right on top of it, or Scott, I mean, and he's a he's a good ref, and he caught it and says what it's supposed to say. Let's hope Hazen can claw their way back into it. Yeah, we it looked a little more promising there late in the first half. Throughout the you know the the first 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so of the first half, we didn't see a whole lot of action down here at the uh, Bullets end. It was all like up at our end. Our Ethan Shoplin was being tested repeatedly. Isaiah Baker got a shot off there though, scooped up by goalie Robert Dearborn. Now, did you happen to see the Finn Rooney goal, Harry? I missed it. Okay. I was distracted coming up here. We're warming up for our game tomorrow. That's right. Hazen Union Lady Cats going down to People's Academy yep. to play the Wolves. Yep. A tough test for any team. It will be, but I expect a good match. Looking forward to it. Jim Eisenhardt always has strong teams. Um, Definitely. But it'll be a good test for us, and we're, we feel positive. And we'll see how we can do. That's good. So far, a bit of a tough start for you. Oh, there's another shot on goal that's going to go over. Uh, 
came up short against Lake Region. They were a very talented team. And then I thought Rivendell were. came in here. Yep. And uh, with a, a really strong, athletic-looking team, I thought Rivendell was. Um, we've been physically a Physically outmatched by quite a bit in our first two games. Uh, we've got a lot of young players. They both had a lot of old players. That's uh, what we're saying. You guys are very freshman loaded. Yep. But we uh, there's also a learning curve. You don't you don't have to be the strongest team to win. You have to play the best soccer. And Absolutely. So we uh, optimistic about the rest of our season. You how know, is uh, we have things we need to improve on? How is speaking of young? How is your freshman goalie? She Emily she, uh, Kimmel she doing? has an amazing spirit. Uh, I, her resilience is. Great. She is ready to take on the Wolves tomorrow. Jump um, back in. Oh, that's which good. Is, and she, she's encouraged and keeps learning. So. Get right back on that horse and ride. Right. Right. And so that's the most important thing right now. Two, uh, two tough games for her, but she's ready to get back up and keep fighting. So. There you go. Can't ask for anything more. Riker Willette moves in. Loses that one out. Cats are coming out, uh, claw, like you say, they're clawing here in this half so far, putting some pressure. Yep. On Dearborn. Well, it sounds like Fairfax uh, dominated some of the play in the first half. They saying. did. They did, both on the offense and defensive. Yep. Uh, and then they almost had their way with taking the ball over to the far corner and then centering it in. I mean, I think without the play of our defense and a lot of saves by the, by the mini shopper there, we could easily be down, you know, a couple more goals. Oh, wow. Okay. But they're still in it. Good. Still in it. Wyatt Bellavance with the head up. Ethan Wamet. Wamet back, keeps it in. Riker Wallet up the side, taken down. Nice trap by Levi Trask. Played back, Cody Hall ahead. Back, there's Jared Sweet. Moves the ball up. Wallet loses that one to Mary. He's dangerous. Moves up in, past Rosenthal, puts a shot over, taken out, up and over the net. He's unlucky there. He seemed to very. We have dodged. The ball. We have dodged many bullets today. No pun intended, Harry. <laughs> Goal kick, Rosenthal. That's a chunk. Remember the chip and yes, the chunk? That's, right. that's a chunk out by Jared Sweet. I like it. There's the chip and there's the chunk. That was a chunk. Wyatt Bellavance. I would say Wyatt Bellavance is the master of the chip. Yeah, there, there is an art to getting a good chip. As well as a good chunk. As well as a good chunk. Carl Brusso, one goal already, trying to work the ball in. Bullets, a lot of patience here. Just looking for the right thing. Wow. Bellavance takes that one out. Decker goes down. Are we going to have a corner kick? We noticed in the first half, too, the Bullets were very good at, at short passes that are looking to go one way, and then they almost sort of like a hockey player when they misdirect a puck with a stick. Mm-hmm. And they are really, really good at that. Number 19, we have no idea what his name is. He's not on our roster. We're calling him Johnny U. He's wearing Johnny Unitas' number. Boyd over. This is Ethan Wamet. Fairfax are certainly confident on the ball, uh, and they are happy to have Hazen run at them. They seem to be just sort of touching by them with ease, and yeah. confidence is going to grow and grow if Hazen can't make solid tackles to dispossess them. Saw a lot of that in the first half. Riker Willett. Wyatt Bellavance. Owen DeMeyer. Just great short passing by them. Short passing and moving into space and passing ahead of their player. Mm -hmm. They're not just passing back and forth, but they're passing ahead so they can run onto it. And then the Hazen players are just left standing on their heels. We saw a few uh, broken ankles out there as the ball went by the defense. Once again, look at that. 
Shot by DeMeyer goes wide, but just beautiful play yep. to, to get it lined up. Yep. Julius Rosenthal. Boyd over, taken out by Anthony Patrick. Patrick gives chase in the far corner. Use their feet extremely well. Wow, turn, DeMar. Nice save by Ethan Choplin. DeMar got the turnaround, wide open, point blank shot on. And it came off with just a fantastic pass, trap. Is that, Harry, is that the way soccer is supposed to be played or what? It's supposed to look something like that. Yeah. And, uh, the, like they've been so successful in the middle of the field with these small, accurate passes, the Shoplin made a great save, but the Fairfax striker would have been better off just stopping and doing an accurate pass right to one of the corners, and there's no way Shoplin is going to get to it. But Shoplin was lucky. I think he uh, got a little excited. He was picturing the beautiful goal he was going to score before he actually took the shot, and Shoplin was able to get a piece of it. Well, he was able to get the whole, get the whole thing, more than a piece of it. It was a great save. I believe this is Ethan's second full season in goal. Didn't him and Wyatt split it a couple years ago? Wyatt Bellavance, I believe. So some experience back there with the junior, Ethan Shopland. He's in corner kick. Middle of the field, Dearborn up, makes a save. Finn Rooney. Takes it outside, works against Ethan Womet. Throw in Trask. Finn Rooney tries to move that one up. Cody gives chase in the corner, keeps it in on the side, but can't keep it in from going <laughs> off the end line. The poor, the ball boy almost took out poor Cody. Caught him right on the back leg as he was running. Short kick. Up to Trask, Trask moves it up. Willett keeps it in, here's Cody. Moves ahead, Baker out there, Dearborn. With the acrobatic save on that one. Yep, that was a good reaction, he read the play well. Uh, it was a perfect chip from Cody uh, into a good space and the goalie had to make a decision if he was, thought his defense was gonna get it or if he thought he had time to get it. And he made a brave decision to come out. Dearborn, a senior goalkeeper for the bullets. So. There, there's nothing that I'd confidence to your team like a strong and aggressive goalie to keep you safe at the back. Saw that last year at Dan when Danville came in here with Tim White. Yes. I mean, he was just a phenomenal That's leader right. out there. Right, right. It, it changes the entire dynamics of your team. Yeah. If they can come and just command things and shut down the, shut down the other team yeah. and then just start your team out on the right foot. I noticed a thin bench from Hazen. Yeah, not a whole lot of subs over there, and that's coming to play. Shot up, went wide. Oh, I thought that went in. Yeah, it definitely hurt us against PA last week. We only had one sub. Uh, what did we see over there, one or two today? One or two. I assume they're both eligible. I'm assuming as well. Sometimes they'll suit up with an injury, but. Can't really tell from this vantage point, but. Uh, and I certainly don't want to speculate. Lady Cats with a bit of a thin bench as well. Uh, 
unexpectedly thin. Yeah. Um, we've got, we have quite a few subs, but we also in the scrimmages picked up quite a few injuries. Um, we've, we have a young squad and went against some older physical teams and that kind of really rattled us. Um, I got an update today. We have a senior and junior that are both struggling to get fit. They both looked good coming into the season and now they're both not Ball. expecting to have them able to be fit enough to play a lot, which is really unfortunate. I think Jamar was offside on that play. He's yeah. been trying to cheat up there a little bit. If you can get it, take it, but right. they've been calling. Well, let's hope that everybody comes back healthy and uh, gets better and we put together another good season. I hope so. Twenty-eight, twenty-four left to go here. Here's Baker. Can he get out there ahead? He doesn't get ahead of Jarrett Sweets. Brusso trying to add to his one goal today. Can't quite do it. Working the far side. I believe that's Anthony Patrick over there. Shot on, Shopper makes the save. Ball bounces up over three defenders there though. Finn Rooney gets that ahead, easy scoop for Dearborn. Dearborn, big punts. Come the bullets. Shot wide. It's frustrating as a coach to see your players get into that dangerous area and then take a shot from that that distance. Unless you've got a real rocket, there's no way you're gonna beat the keeper. Unless you see him sleeping, unless he thought he saw something, but to waste that possession in that dangerous area is really frustrating uh, when you're standing on the sideline. But they love to shoot from outside, don't they? It's almost like shooting a three-pointer in basketball, you know? It's, well, it's it's what makes the highlight reels. Yeah. And it's, it's a beautiful thing when you can make it happen, but. Doesn't happen all that often. Right, but you gotta, you gotta trust your teammates and trust that someone else is gonna get into a better position and work together. Rosenthal up ahead, trapped down, Finn Rooney. Trask holding off Rooney. Dearborn goal kick. Wow. Brought that over to Trask a couple of times to try and move it up. I guess they trust in their passing game. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how they adapt that. We'll see if Cody can adapt to that too and push them yeah. a little further up, put more pressure on, try and be ready to, uh, or set a trap for him, try and dispossess him a little quicker. We'll we'll see how Hazen can adapt if they're going to keep doing that. But they almost wonder if they're trying to area. suck everybody up and then they're going to boot it long and, you know. Uh, yeah. Be interesting. Yeah. We'll watch the next few. Cody tries to move inside. side, Davison back to Patrick. Up ahead, ball in the middle. There's Finn Rooney with a nice trap down. Cody over to Baker. Baker, can he turn and get it? He can't, held off. Are we gonna get a call against Jared Sweet? In the box, we're we gonna have a penalty shot here, Harry. Yeah. He, uh, Took him down. Right. He was just pushed him away, pushed him away, pushed him away, and Ruck was able to see him. You, you can get away with leaning into him. And now, did they not call that in the box? I have no idea. 
Indirect kick. Maybe they called something that was off the ball. So the far side referee's hands straight up in the air, which means it's indirect. Hmm. Uh, I was watching the play on the ball, which was certainly yeah. almost on top of the penalty mark. Right. So he must have seen something outside the box that uh, was deemed a illegal play. Um, with the referee's hand straight in the air, it means uh, the ball has to touch someone else before it goes in the net on either team for it to count as a goal. Um, Tried a little trick shot there. Didn't happen. Yep. So I guess the refs deemed uh, the defense from the Fairfax player legal. It, uh, he, was, he, was, he was able to bring his arm up a little bit to slow Isaiah down, which the ref said was okay. And I think it would have been harsh if it had been given a penalty for that. Cody gets a shot on goal wide. Ball bounces though, yeah. Baker tries to get it. Again, that's one of your shots from right. low percentage, let's say. Low percentage shots. Um, he really had to keep the goalkeeper sleeping and he really had to have a perfect shot to make that turn into something. Baker goes wide. Especially when, down. Especially when he had two other players sort of in the center of the box that right. with a little more patience he could have worked around to or he could have tried to work around to for either a header or a driven ball across that they could have looked to get into the far post. But it's, at a, it's, it's easy to panic when you're in front of goal and you're desperate to score. It's, Take a shot from anywhere. It's easy to just think selfishly. Fire away. Right. It's easy to think selfishly, but it's important to uh, Play have, the team have that composure. Yeah. And that, that comes with, it's a, it's a rare skill to have that kind of composure in front of the goal. There's Baker trying to get there. Taken out, man, what a play by Dearborn to get that out. Yeah, mm. interesting. Almost a slide tackle, wasn't yep, it, Harry? Absolutely. Uh, if he comes out with his hands and he smothers it, it's a little safer for him and safer for the other players around him if he can get his arm and leg up to protect himself. But with a two-footed slide tackle, if he connects with another player, he's also vulnerable to give himself a red card and give away a penalty kick in the same play. Where if he tackles the ball and smothers it, then the refs, uh, it's very rare that you see that given, if they contact the ball, it's rare you see that given away as a uh, infringement from the goalkeeper. But with a two-footed tackle, then it's the same as any other player. You're, yeah. you're likely to get a red card. As they say, slide tackling has basically been outlawed in the high school game, right? Uh, they, they're calling it more and more harshly, uh, yeah. just to keep players safe. Right. And we have a stoppage of play, and with 2137 left to go in the ball game, and the BFA, uh, the Fairfax Bullets, up two to one. We'll let you know that our sponsor today, once again, Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517, service and protection since 1979. Give Mike Gothier a call; he will insure everything and anything that you need insured. And if you would like to sponsor a Hayes Noon Wildcat sporting event, please contact us at hctv.us. Get more bang for your advertising buck on the World Wide Web. You can sell it from Swanton to Singapore via Hardwick Community Television. Griff on camera. Harry Bissett up here providing expert analysis and commentary as always. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV. Channel 16 on your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Cats looking to do something here, taking a page from the Bullets book. That ball up high! Oh man, Dearborn really skied up there to knock that out. I thought it was headed in. Absolutely, so did I. Fantastic save by Dearborn. There's a play in, players down, no calls. Wind blowing towards the direction of the Bullets bowl. goal. See if it comes into play on this throw. Ball up. Everybody trying to get to it. There's a scrum. Cody, center of the field. Over on the far side, that's Tyson Davison trying to come down with it. Tyson turned back. Got Isaiah Friend working inside. Beautiful Baker, open, takes it in. Now Dearborn came out and did that two-footed slide again right there. No call. Yep. Uh, 
With Baker yes, right there. Careful. Baker goes yep. down. Yep. Uh, yep, huh. that, was an, that was a beautiful turn to get past the defender. Uh, well, Baker was going to have it. Yep. Here we go again. Buddy. He's got a step. He, uh, I think he took one too many touches to get onto his stronger foot. Shot on high. And that cost him because the one extra touch gave the goalie time to react. Uh, but the goalie was flat on his heels, and if he'd been able to slot that into those side corners, Hazel would be tied 2 2. 19.59 left as the wind picks up here. We've got another batch of clouds over here behind us. Let's hope yep. we don't get any type of precipitation. Yeah, blowing towards the Fairfax goal. Hopefully that'll help Hazen out a little bit. Their, uh, Fairfax shouldn't be able to get it as far out. Hazen's balls will carry a little bit more. Let's see what happens here on this goal kick. They've been going right over here to the near side to Levi Trask. I noticed Finn Rooney up there. I'd be cheating up on him. Yep. I'd be standing right beside him. That's just what he's done. Yeah. I mean, Finn's fast. Finn's not only quick, he's sudden. You got number three, Weston Black, here in the back on the near side as well. Let's see what Dearborn's going to do. Chips it up. There's Black. Cody right there with the head. Down, Cody. Swing and a miss. Ball advanced up. Hayes in defense cheating way up. They're almost to midfield. We got a player. Well, Demire was offside. Now he's back on. Hayes and have certainly been the more physical team in this half. It's been getting them. Uh, it's been getting them many more opportunities than the Fairfax team has sort of seemed to have fallen asleep a little bit. Rosenthal over. Patrick down. Baker looking to get the turn. Ball skids out to the far side. Friend gives chase. That's, uh, is that going to stay in bounds? Yeah, ball's held up. Friend back to Patrick. Definitely a, a more uh, intense effort here by the Hazen Union Wildcat boys here in the second half. Yep, well, let's hope they can get rewarded with a, another score on the board. They've certainly had more chances in this half. Shoppin's touched it maybe twice. A couple of nice saves, if I remember right. Yep. Dearborn, some beautiful saves as well, especially on that high shot that I thought for sure was going to drop in for a goal. I'm not sure. I don't think they were sure. Ball back, take it down, Mitchell. Owen Demar. The unconventional knee ball. Finn Rooney taken down. We're going to have a call on that one. It's Levi Trask. Really? Just, they call that on Finn? They, well, uh, the ref on the far side says there's a foul on Hazen. Going back up the field. Ref, now, how can he make a call over there when the referee is standing right here? Are going to have a drop ball? I don't, I don't know. I believe it's going to be. Like a hockey and face off, uh, face off in hockey. Yeah. I guess neither referee could agree, so they did a drop. Or maybe they each saw something they different. thought was a foul, and so they said, okay, if it was even infringement, then we'll just do a drop ball. They cool. will have a lot more drop balls this year. Uh, any time the play resumes will be a drop ball. If any time there's a stoppage for an injury, unless the ball's in the goalie's hands, uh, it's going to be a drop ball this year. Here's Demar, he's dangerous, gets it by Mitchell. Regardless Julius of Rosenthal. who has possession. Turn, shot, off the bar. Ball careens back out. Rosenthal trying to do anything to get it out. Baker trying to move it up. Degree boots it out of bounds. Once again, both these teams at 0-1-1, so they're both looking for the first one of the season. Wildcats lost to PA 5-1 last week, and uh, Fairfax opened up their season with an 8-0 defeat by the uh, Milton Yellow Jackets, I think it is, beat them 8-zip. But uh, Milton Division II team went deep into the playoffs last year. So I was talking to the Fairfax coach, Jake Hubbard, before the game. So they took what they could out of that game, and... Uh, See what happens here today. 
first half, I'd say they played fairly textbook. They started out okay here in the second half, but uh, Katz keeping the pressure on. Baker chips it back. Finn Rooney, middle of the field. Back, Colton Nimi. Taken out. Up ahead. Wow. Wow. Great play. Ethan Shoplin coming way out of goal. Way. Yep. Almost to the bottom of the circle out here. Yeah. Good speed from him. Good reaction. He was confident. He I mean, he kind of had to do something. Defense was way up. I thought Tamar was offside on the play. It's been called for that several times today. Here's Baker. Finn Rooney not giving up. Boyd gets that one out center field. Decker and Rosenthal collide. Decker stays down. They go knee to knee. Um. Or did he just sort of lose his wind? He just landed his feet, and he knew the other player was coming, and I think he, I think he knew that if he stopped at the ball, he was either going to get run over or he was going to be able to walk away with it. Isaac Decker, the junior for the Bullets, back up. Johnny Yu with a kick. That one's almost going to go on goal, probably. Play back, defense. Shopper comes down with that one. Carol Brusso with the turnaround attempt. Free kick. Rosenthal, high and wide. And that must be frustrating for a coach. Yes. Any to have an opportunity and set and play piece that doesn't even touch another player and just goes out of bounds, whether it's a corner kick that doesn't. Yeah. You, sometimes you have corner kicks that just go behind the goal. Right. Wasted opportunity. You'll have throw-ins where a player does it illegally to lift their foot up or something. And we actually have seen Harry play. two throw-ins called for illegal throw-ins this year so far. Yep. I mean, it got to the point where they were chest passing in. You know, it was, it was driving me nuts. Uh, yep, it's got to come all the way back over your head, and both feet have to stay on the ground. Wyatt Bellavance with the chunk back up to midfield. Patrick off the end line. That'll give the Bullets the corner kick. 13 minutes left to go in the ball game. Still a lot of time. We'll see if Hazen's lack of depth affects them in the end of the game. If they're the team that they've been pressing so hard for the last 20 minutes, we'll see if they tire out or we'll see if they can keep that intensity up and get a goal. Johnny Yu with the corner, middle of the field, down, Shopper. I don't know how many saves he's got, but it's quite a few. Well, that's sort of Boyd. Rosenthal up. We're here to the near side, gonna roll out of bounds. Throw in Decker. back, Trask with Baker on him. Over to Decker. Decker. Gonna have James Boyd throw. Oh. Here's the turn, Rosenthal. Yep, good Working against play. Decker.
Johnny Yu looks inside. Rosenthal, nice play back. Number 19 tried to trap it down. I tell you, I call him Johnny Yu and he plays like him too. Kid is tough. This, this little number 19 for. Yep. I wish I had a name to go with him. I don't have a 19 on my uh, roster here, but he's played tough. Tamar working against Rosenthal. Well, that long throw, Nimi with the head over. There's Boyd to break that up. We've seen him do that a bunch of times this game. James Boyd played a great game on defense. Here's DeMar going in. Patrick, he's got to get that one out. Takes it off the sideline this time. 10, 30, and counting in the ball game. Cats looking to get a goal and at least tie this up. Maybe send it to overtime. Bellavance goes up, player goes down. Nice trap from Hazen there. Patrick, right to coach Jake Hubbard. Throw in, bullets. At this point, Harry, I'm hoping we stay dry. Well, I'm hoping Hazen scores two, and I think we and might we stay dry. Escape out of here. Yeah, if we it goes stay. to overtime, we might get a little wet. Yes. Johnny Yu. Moving up in. This is not bode well. There we go. Hazen defense stout on that one. Yep, they did well. As my colleague Griff would say, stout. We have just been a couple of walking thesauruses up here the past <laughs> few games, Harry. Well, I'm sorry to show up and slow you guys down. No, 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 it's all good. I'll, it's all I'll, be, good. I'll be ready next time. Okay. Yes, we'll expect you to have your thesaurus ready to go. Demar giving chase with Riker Willett. Willett out of bounds, throw in Demar. Demar drops it in, back. Reese Decker over to Johnny Yu. Taken out. Lincoln Mitchell. Turn around. We're going to have a yellow card, it looks like, given to Reese Decker. Now explain to us once again, Harry, the yellow card procedure. So if you get a yellow card, you have to leave the field of play, but a sub can come on for you. So he has to step off, uh, and a player can come on, but he's allowed to come back on. He can, he could go stand in the line now if the coach wanted to let him, and he could come right back on. Uh, the idea is that usually you've gotten a yellow card for either a series of fouls or an excessive foul. Something the ref has deemed that you need a more serious consequence. A little for. bit of a break. The idea is that. No one out here is expected to be a professional, and that when you're a professional, you can get a yellow card and you can keep your cool. Uh, but in the idea of safety, you need to leave the field just to get a chance to cool, cool down and uh, be ready to stay safe and keep everyone else around you safe. Now the red card, card of course, means you're gone, and then do you play short? You the, can't have yep. somebody subbed in, right? Yep, red card is uh, for some kind of violent conduct uh, or two yellow cards and you go off the field, you are not allowed to return, and your team plays a person down. 7.15 left to go in the ball game. Bullets clinging to that 2-1 lead. 
A lot of action out here. Here's DeMar working against Rosenthal. Shot on. Good defending to slow him down and leave him with half a chance at the top of the box. Colton Nimi up ahead. Davison give chase over there with Degree. That did not look legal. That, he, he was testing his luck, I think. Yeah. With a couple fake outs and then with the <laughs> sort of the twist at the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Baker trying to make a play. Nimi in there as well. Baker trying to do anything. Blocked out, I believe that was Levi Trask down blocking that one out. And the Bullets defense proving to be stout now. <laughs> Colton Nimi with the corner kick. 5.50 and ticking on the clock. Left in the match. Center of the field, take him out, wow. Wow. Boyd almost scored on himself there. You can see how appreciative number 22 is that his yes. goalkeeper is able to come across and collect that because I think as soon as he hit that, his Kinda, oops. heart was in his throat. He knew <laughs> that there was a chance that he just uh, ruined Fairfax's yeah. narrow lead. He's doing a good job of keeping it down here in the end so far. Mm. Baker here on the near side. Can't get it down, though. Trask. Back. Well, let's throw. Looks for Baker. Goes off the back of his foot. Levi Trask and Isaiah Baker just going at it over here on the near side. Finn Rooney with the throw in. Time ticking down, 4.30. That's a chip out by Owen DeMar. Throw in, Boyd. Another corner. We'll see if Hazen can uh, see if they can mount something. They need a little better service. He uh, miscued it last time and it scuffed across the surface, which led to the misplay by, by Boyd. the Fairfax defender. But Hazen needs to get something somewhere up near get that up penalty area. Here we go again, wow. and there's a goal! Lance, I stand corrected. Just skip it down, right? Go for the same play and hope for an own goal, I guess. I believe that was Isaiah Baker. Did Isaiah Baker get a foot on? Or, or, or was it again the or was it again the Fairfax defense? Fairfax play, yeah, I can't remember. They're, they're hugging Finn Rooney. So I'm could that sure. be Finn Rooney's second goal of the game? Everybody came up and hugged Finn. He must have made some kind of play down there. We'll, we'll check the replay when we're at yeah, Absolutely. We'll give that and I'm glad at least that time when the ball went in, I got the goal! And so <laughs> 3.50 left, 2-2 two -two tie. Oh 3.30 left to go in the match. Wyatt Bellavance up ahead. Played back. And they are calling Colton Nimi and Colton Gillian. Did they both get yellow cards? Yep. Just a little too physical. Just send them both off, take a break. A cool pair things down. Uh, the, uh, after a last minute contentious goal, the refs are just doing a good job kind of keeping the play calm. Right. Get everyone, everyone needs to relax a little bit. Uh, don't let anyone get carried away. Just keep control of the game. 
pair of Coltons exit the field with yellow cards. Colton Gillian for the Bullets. Colton Nemi for the Wildcats. That'll stop the clock. 3.21 left to go in the ballgame. And a 2-2 tie right now. Much to the chagrin of my wife, Harry, as our daughter is over at gymnastics, and I was supposed to go for the run to pick her up. And if we go overtime... Well, you're going to get wet, and she's going to go for a drive, I think. <laughs> Either that or I may have to hand off to you and you finish the game. <laughs> that could work, too. Now, an interesting... Uh, Bylaw, I'm not sure what you call it. The refs are not allowed to say how many people are or are not allowed to be in the drop ball, so Hazen could have four people in there if they want. Really? And so could Fairfax. Yeah. I did not know that. I don't, yeah. Uh, if, if you look at the amendments to the rule, you're allowed to just stack people in there, which will create for some interesting situations if there are drop balls inside the box where you can really just make a wall of players on one side, it's going to turn into more of an American football play than a mm. soccer play. Which interesting. Be interesting. Yes, it'll, it'll be. All right, Johnny we'll we'll see if any of those strange plays play Happen. out this season. Johnny U with the free kick, middle of the field, back, taking out Rosenthal. Ball bounces high. We've seen the bullets get in here. We're going to have a goal kick with 240. We'll have to go in the ball game. Now, is there a little breakage in play, or are we going to go immediately to overtime if this game ends in a tie? Well, they'll, everyone will get a chance to uh, come off the field, get a drink of water, uh, talk to the coach. But then the uh, – and Vermont gets dark pretty quick, and they one of the reasons they're changing the rules is to keep them playing in the daylight and get back on and finish right. the game as soon as possible. Particularly when you get those games in late October. Right. Uh, it's also a golden goal, so as soon as one team scores, the game is over. And one team heads home with the glory, and the other team thinks about what could have been. Golden goal. Back in the old days, it was sudden death. Yes. Now golden goal. Here's Finn Rooney. Oh, Finn can't come down with that play. Tries to trap it down, gets it back. Finn Rooney here on the near side, trying to look to get into the center. Finn Rooney over to Wyatt Bellavance, puts a shot on. It's going to be Wyatt Dearborn down. Cody Hall right there to try and get that. Dearborn had a bobble on him. And how long will the overtime period be? You're really testing my knowledge now. I believe it's two 10-minute halves. I thought so. I thought it was 10. So I think they might get either two or five minutes off uh, to get ready, and then I think they have a 10-minute half, and then they'll have a one- or two-minute break, and then another 10-minute half, I believe. If we go then. Yep. And eventually we'll end as a draw in the regular season. Right. Girls lost a heartbreaker in the playoffs last year on penalty kicks yes. after a couple of overtimes. After, with 13 seconds left to tie it up and send it to overtime and then to hold on so well yeah. through the overtime. Um, it's a, it's a, it can be a brutal way to decide a game. 45 seconds left here in the match. Johnny Yu brings it out. Here's Finn Rooney. Got a little bit of time here. Finn trying to get it ahead. There's Tyson Davison, moves it ahead. It's uh, Baker. Oh, there's a shove down, an absolute in the back shove down by Levi Trask. We gotta, we gotta have a call. Do we have a call? Do we have any kind of call? I don't believe so. Well, it's goal kick. Wow, Trask just absolutely forearm shivered him to the back to I take him down. I think what the refs looked at were that Isaiah's momentum was taking him in that direction, anyways, and that uh, it wasn't enough of an infringement to. Five, four, three, two, one. Finn Rooney is going to be a take a miracle here, and that is the end of regulation. With these two teams tied up 2 2 off a couple of Finn Rooney goals. Uh, once again, it was Owen Tamara and Carl Brusso in the first half. Finn Rooney in the first half. Finn Rooney here late in the game in the second half. We're going to have a little bit of a break here, or are we just going to, are we just going to do this? Yep. Five minute five break. Minutes. All right, I'm going to check in with my wife. I'll be right back. All hey, right, then we're back. Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School in the heart of Vermont. Hazen Union Wildcat Boys home opener. Going to go overtime against the Fairfax Bullets. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Our sponsor today, getting their money's worth, Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517, the number to call. 
Uh, Mike will ensure anything that you need. Griff on camera. Harry Bissett up here on uh, expert analysis. And uh, we saw things get real physical, almost a little chippy yep. there towards the end of the game. Yep. Uh, referee, I saw the referee, you know, have a talking with both teams saying, hey, let's just come out and play. Yep. Play it tough, play it fair. Uh, play it, of course, you listen to the fan base down here, and both of them, you know, both sides are hollering for fouls that aren't called. But as usual, until you're ready to put on a yellow jersey and go out there, <laughs> which is something I will never do. I'm, I, absolutely not. You, you got to just. Uh, thankless job. Yeah. You just got to be uh, Able to set that all aside. Rosenthal, Ooh, nice wow. play back. Wow, dangerous play. Yep. Decker was right there on his back. Coach Bursing looks pretty cool over there in his corner. Yes, he does. First year coach Kyle Bursing looking for his first win of the season. And uh, as well as uh, Jake Hubbard, coach for the Fairfax Bullets. Both teams come in with a record of 0 and 1. We're going to go to overtime. A couple of goals by Finn Rooney. He's been our hero. Kept us in the game. Owen DeMeyer, Carl Brusso scoring for the Fairfax Bullets to make this game the 2-2 tie that it is. I'll thank my wife in advance for allowing me to stay up here. Not having to go after Lydia at gymnastics quite yet. Let's hope the Cats can get a quick score and then I can go over and do that. All will be right with the world. <laughs> and if we can beat the rain. Yeah, looking like, well, we got a little bit of silver lining back there on that cloud, so. Yeah. Wyatt Bellavance loses that one. The pass up ahead, defense back, gets by Mitchell, turn around. Wyatt Bellavance on his horse, the shot on goal high. And a little bit of frustration there as uh, Isaac Decker really wanted to put that in and just end this game right here. Yep, I think he realized. His other players didn't. I think he realized how far out of goal Shopland was, and he wanted to see something earlier and over him. Get it up Shopland and over him. Be careful. He doesn't get beat with it. Just a ball from way out when he's out, when he's, uh, and get caught off his line. There's Cody Hall, center of the field. Tyson Davison up and over. There's Baker streaking in, puts a shot on. Knocked out, way out. Great action. <laughs> but... Harry, in, in soccer, is it sort of like in hockey, once you get to overtime, put anything on goal, you never know what's going to happen? Yes and no. I mean, that's sort of the, uh, you, you know, the strategy then. It is sudden death, but you, the same thing, you don't want to have these half chances from 20 yards out if <laughs> everyone's in a good position, if the goalie's in a good position. If, if he's set up, then he should be saving it every single time. And it's going to give the advantage back to the other team. So you don't want to abandon your team's strategy, strategy too much. Um, and you want to stay, you want to stay composed, but there is a little more urgency with the clock ticking down. Boyd goes down. Lincoln Mitchett called on that one. You give the bullets the free kick. Six twenty left to go in the first overtime. You say we play two? Well, I a ten and a five I, maybe. I think we play two tens, but they may have changed it to one ten, and then I'm not sure. They update. We'll the find out. Once we'll find out. Or maybe we won't if Hazen can score on this play. That's right. There's always that opportunity as well. Ball kept back in. Ooh, there's a scary collision between yeah. Bellavance, but I mean. Bellavance had possession of the ball. The other player came in, and Bellavance stood his ground. You're not going to take Wyatt Bellavance down. Nope, he's a pretty solid player. Pretty solid person. I believe, I'm trying to look at the number, that was Owen DeMar, who has uh, one of the two Fairfax goals that was involved yep. in that collision with Wyatt yep. Bellavance. It's quite a bit less mass than Wyatt. Yes. And Wyatt was able to use that. And he, it was fair play on him. He was defending himself, and he had possession. Uh, to the huge objection of the Fairfax fans. Yeah. Yep. Riker will end on the far side, working against Demeyer. Ball rolls out. Wind blowing in the direction of the Hazen goal. So I wonder if that's going to become a factor. Yeah, 
Julius Rosenthal knocking that one out. I tell you, Julius Rosenthal for the Wildcats and James Boyd for the Bullets have played some fantastic defense out here today. Boyd swings and misses on that one. Comes Tyson Davison up. Ooh. Cats have the sun in their eyes coming up the field. Yeah, it's... Finn Rooney. They don't seem to be quite Finn. sure what to do with it. Knocked back out by Adam Degree. Ball in. Dearborn over. Going to play this one. Four minutes left to go in this first overtime. Hi, Pucks. Both goalkeepers have been close to jumping right out of their box when they... Uh, I noticed that too. Now, if you come out of the box the on the it's punt, a it's a handball. I did notice that on several occasions that they were pretty darn close. Both teams also need to be sure that their players with yellow cards don't pick up a second yellow card uh, because they'll be dismissed from the game and their team will have to finish with a man down. We had a pair of Coltons, Colton Gillian, Colton Nimi, and, and uh, Decker as well. Decker, Fairfax yes, two, Reese right? Decker. Two players with yellow cards. Yeah. yeah, pick up a foolish penalty here by any of those players and they're gone, right? And you play a man down. Yep. Um, yeah. Now Fairfax what are we in a dangerous position here, direct kick. Uh, sun in Shopland's eyes, we'll see. Up, moved out. Here's uh, Caleb, Caleb Friend. Good defense by Hazen. Ball rolls out. Throw in Degree. Taken out by Patrick, Anthony Patrick. Here's Boyd back in. Patrick, back up. Pass over. Boyd with control. Pitches it outside. Wimet taken out by Anthony Patrick. I noticed Harry about halfway through that, the second half, and, and here, Fairfax no longer doing those short passes, passing to the spaces and stuff. Did the defense take that away? or? Uh, Hazen was certainly more aggressive in the second half. Uh, and maybe just mentally they were able to intimidate Fairfax a little more. And you, you need to have some confidence to be able to put those passes together. And I think Hazen woke up a little bit and it scared Fairfax off. They weren't as able to um, they weren't as able to string those passes together. Hazen has certainly not been flat footed in the second half or this overtime. A lot of a lot of energy out there considering a lot of these players have played the the entire game. Right? Yep. They said thin bench over there. Yep. Fairfax crowd wanted to call on Lincoln Mitchett. Taking the player down there in the box. We've seen that happen on both sides on several occasions. And referees kind of allowing them to play. Ben Rooney, our hero, out to Cody Hall. Cody looking to get the turn. Working up here against Wilmette. Inside, Baker broken up. Uh, Caleb Friend, I keep wanting to say Isaiah. It's not Isaiah, it's Caleb Friend. Don't shoot it. You hear the, ref, hear the fans yelling, shoot it. Baker takes a shot, goes high. Good turn, good shot, but... Too high. Too far. If he'd been lower, though, it was right down the middle. It was going right at the keeper. you got to find the outsides right. of those goals or find the outsides of that goal. One minute left to go in overtime of what could possibly be the first overtime, we think. Or possibly the last. Or possibly the last. We'll learn. Yeah, still a lot of time out here. Ball trickles up through. Good pressure. Baker can't quite catch up with it. They'll have about 45 seconds left to... Make, Make something, something happen, happen here. Yep. We oh, they lost a ball boy. He's still in the woods fetching Baker's ball. And <laughs> taking a few more seconds off the clock. 35 seconds left. Cody Hall, long throw. Drops down in. Taken out by the Bullets. Both teams seem to be asleep on that throw. Yeah, they're kind of standing there flat-footed. He's onside. Shot. <laughs> Wide. Going to go off the end line. We're going to have a Hazen goal kick. With 15 seconds. This should pretty well. 10, 9. Yeah, Rosenthal lines up. I would just boot this high and fire and yep. get it out and away. And 3, 2, 1. And that is the end of the first overtime.
with the score still tied 2-2. And welcome back to the second overtime period here from the Hazen Union Wildcats home opener here at beautiful Hudson Fields Hazen Union High School in Hard Vermont. Your Hazen Union Wildcats in action today against the Fairfax Bullets. 2-2 Two -two tie. It's been this way since late in the second half of regulation. Lance Hall with the call for HGTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hgtv.us. Griff on camera, Harry Bissett on expert analysis. Our sponsor today, Calderwood Insurance, 472. Uh, I've forgotten the number. <laughs> 5177, I think, or 5711. I can't remember. Um, you think I've given it enough today. But anyway, it's Calderwood Insurance, located right in beautiful downtown Hard Vermont. Look him up in the phone book. Give Mike a call. He will insure everything and anything that you need insurance on. Harry, some amazing action out here. In the, and like we were talking off camera here in between, Cats have definitely been aggressive since about halfway through that second half and through the overtime. And uh, thus far, real physical. Yep. And they, uh, they, deserve, they deserve to be back in this game. And uh, we've seen a few yellow cards. We've seen, of course, a lot of non-calls. We've seen upset fans on both sides for non-calls. But uh, I think the referees have, have played it fairly decently yep. Yep. for the game. I, I think the number of non-calls or blown calls have been fairly equally distributed. Yep, absolutely. And I, there's been, I've seen no clear, obvious error, no glaring. There's some things you can wonder about, but no clear or obvious things that I've seen. Free kick to the center of the field. Wyatt Bellavance boots that one up ahead. Hazen looking to get something going. Tyson Davison up ahead. Baker in the vicinity. There's Cody Hall. He's going to get a shot on. Taken down by Dearborn. A little more power on that. He had a real chance of, if not, Sneaking getting, it by goal, him. If not getting the goal, bouncing it off for the keeper to bobble it. He hasn't been. Right. Getting a little ricochet. Baker was, would have been right there to yep, get the rebound. Baker was doing just the right thing. Cody Hall with a head. He's going to get in there. Go shoulder to shoulder. Playing tough against Levi Trask. Cody goes down. Trask has been all world back there on defense He's doing a good job. for the Bullets. Cody with the throw in. He's a thrower. Taking off the end. We'll have a corner now. What was the call? Not sure. Irregardless, it'll be a goal kick for Fairfax Bullets senior goalie Robert Dearborn to take. Wind kind of settled down now a little bit. Sun out. Sun in Dearborn's eyes now. Patrick playing tough over on the far side. Looking to bring it in. Booted back out by Adam Degree. Colton Nemi plays through. There's Cody up ahead. Baker, Dearborn out. Baker, will that one go in? So just off the side as Dearborn had come way out. The, I saw the refs consult each other. I'm not sure if they're looking to see if there's a foul on the play. Baker went down. But that was a that was a fabulous Baker opportunity. Baker had the Baker had just the right idea to yep. lift play it up hard over to it, and then just that that finesse. The little unfortunately chip. unfortunately off target. A little wide. He had just the right weight on the ball, but just a little bit pushed a little bit. Didn't quite push it back towards the center enough. But a fabulous effort. Dearborn, goal kick. Baker up there trying to get that one. Oh. 
Five after, minutes left to go in the second overtime. 2-2 two -two tie. After such a positive spell, Hazen needs to stay composed on defense. And there's a high shot lifted up over by Isaac Decker, I believe. Rosenthal, goal kick, center of the field. Played up and over. Good Colton ball. Nemi over to Baker. Baker can't quite get the foot on it that he wanted. Here's Nemi, turnaround. Chips ahead, Cody inside, trying to settle down. Puts a shot on, high. I think both teams fire at will right now. Yep, and they're both panicking a little bit. Um, Once again, Finn Rooney, our hero, with the two goals for the Cats. Owen Demire, Carl Brusso, with the two goals for the Bullets. Both goalies played extremely well. We've seen some great stops. They both they both been confident. They have uh, done well in the back. That one's wide as well as we're seeing like <laughs> some shots from way out. I think the coach certainly talked to his Fairfax players and said, hey, Shoplin's off his line. Don't be afraid to chip it over him if you can catch him, which is a good adjustment for their team, and hopefully we won't get punished. Rosenthal, goal kick, center of the field, headed down. Up ahead, here's Decker with a line. Off the post! Wow. Cleared by the defense. Whoa! Oh, man. That was a cheek clencher. Decker with a shot, went off the post. Standing back there with his hands on his knees, which is sort of a foolish place to be, because if they get a steal, he's going to be offsides. Yep, I think he's just, he seems, uh, the entire second half, I noticed too, anytime he, the play doesn't go the way he wants it to go, he just has kind of given up and kind of throws his hands up in disgust and gives up on the play where he could still be contributing positively. He's Trask to, uh, back, Cody goes off, gets it to Ricochet off Cody. It's going to give the Bullets the goal kick. He is a talented player, but in the second half, he's certainly not helped his team as a, much as he a could have. A tad have. selfish. Perhaps a combination of selfish and immature. He's a junior, so. Hazen playing hard, though. I, I mean, the Fairfax crowd up, Johnny U down, but I think that was totally incidental. I didn't see I, Isaiah even move into him at all. There's nothing intentional. Yeah. I, they were, he was looking at the ball. He's just unlucky that the, I think the Fairfax players slipped as much as anything, and they got sandwiched between the two red, to the two Hazen players. Look up ahead, Cody. And boy, takes Cody down. That will certainly be a yellow card. And we see the card coming out. Yep. Um, and Boyd acknowledges it. He if knows. You're, if you're one of the last players back and you take out the attacking player, uh, it's an automatic, automatic yellow, yellow card. card. If, you take, if you're the last defender back and if you take out a player who has a goal scoring opportunity, so if you like slide on somebody in the box, then it's automatic red card. So because Cody was out on, on the side, he was able to do that, stop the play, get a yellow card. Um, so is Which that almost like a smart, a smart play? play? If, yep. Um, Stop the play, motivate your team a little bit? Yep. And it just, he, he knew he was going to get by him. He knew if he didn't slow him down, then Cody that was, was going to yeah. go on to the goal. Uh, so if he had the sort of maturity and experience to realize that he could take him out, sacrifice, get the yellow, um, and give up the free kick instead of a two-on-one, then it was a smart play. And he, he did it safely. Uh, Cody, he certainly didn't do it in a way where it was going right. to hurt Cody. But it, was, it did stop it. 2.03 left to go in the second overtime. And you'll see that a lot at a professional level. Colton Nimi shot on. Tipped up and over by Dearborn. Another great save by Dearborn. That was added in the net. Absolutely. The sun went away at just the right time, I think, for the Fairfax keeper. 1.52 left to go in the game. Great effort by both teams out here today. Yes. Got Hats off to both teams, really. Yep. Playing hard. Great game. Great game. 130 left to go in the game. Corner kick for the Cats. Center. Cody down. Goal! Off 
off of the corner. Cody Hall with the header into the net. What a play to give the Cats their first victory of the season in a hard-fought match with 124 left to go in the second overtime. And a beautiful high kick dropped down. The defense wasn't there to get it. Dearborn just out of position enough. Cody snuck in there. He's tiny. He can get in there, gets the head on the ball, drops it into the net. And uh, Wildcats get out of here with a 3-2 victory today. Well-deserved. Amazing action. And again, hats off to both teams, though. I mean, both teams are out there. They played hard. You saw some, a lot yep. of great, great play on both sides. And yep.